I asked him to write this simple four worded sentence Ram Aam Khata Hai. Very simple. So he picked up the pencil and there was a notebook, notebook in front of him. And then he looks at the blackboard. And then he waits. And I ask him, Likho kya hua? Why didn't you write? And he tells me, Sir, board pe nahi likha hai, stay nahi likha hai. So this child actually thought that he could write, whereas the truth was that he could only copy what was written in front of him. In so many ways, this story told me what can really go wrong with our education system. The next story is again in Northeast Delhi, back in the year 2004. Now this was the time that the government had rolled out the Sarv Shiksha Abhiyan, the Education for All campaign. And as part of this campaign, this was an ambitious plan where the government said, or we basically what was decided was, that all children should be in school and they should be in school. And, there was, and therefore there was a lot of emphasis given to children accessing schools. And therefore a large number of schools were created in structures which, which were not even buildings. This was one example. Here the children were sitting, when I went there on a February morning, the children were sitting under tattered tents trying to make sense of learning. This was not an isolated example then. There were a number of schools which were functioning like that. The next story now, if that was the school here in Delhi, you can imagine what was the condition in schools uh, in remote rural areas when I visited this school and this was in the year 2013 which was near Udaipur in Rajasthan, what I saw was a picture of sheer neglect. As you can see, the school does have a building, but all the children are sitting outside because there was no electricity and the classrooms were literally in dark. So the children were sitting outside, there were very few teachers and there was learning going on. I was in February 2012 in Samastipur in Bihar, where I saw this school, lots of eager-eyed children wanting to learn, wanting to read, but just too many of them for the school to accommodate. Overcrowded schools had been a problem. I am saying had been a problem because now the situation is much better than what it was then. But that's the kind of deficit that we've lived with. In the same school, when I went inside the classroom, I saw this. The classroom was quite literally and figuratively a black hole. The children were in darkness. There was no electricity. The teacher was trying hard to teach. The children were trying harder to learn. Now you can imagine with this kind of a deficit, what kind of a system can we create? Now we all understand the importance of education. I think that has been highlighted enough and I don't need to go into it. Yet, the kind of challenges that we in our country have been facing for the last many decades, sometimes insurmountable challenges, sometimes such against which a lot of teachers, a lot of educators are trying their best to try and make sure that there is a learning environment. But the challenge is extremely daunting. Of course, how do you measure it? You have an examination system. You have an examination system that is archaic, unmanageable. That is based on the belief that in order to really know how much our children have learned, you have to put them through uh, an assessment system by which they are supposed to mug up and then bring out whatever that they have learned. Now that's, that's the reality that I'm talking about. That's the challenge. And the challenge is not so difficult to understand if you look at the numbers. So if you look at the bare facts, we have in our country approximately 200 million children, 20 crores, in the age group 6 to 14, who should be at school in grades 1 to 8. The good news is that nearly all of them, 98% currently, are enrolled in school. Okay. The good news is that 98% of habitations 
have a primary school with grades 1 to 5 within 1 kilometer. That was the promise that Sarv Shiksha Abhiyan had made back in the year 1997. And to a large extent, the issue of access to schools has largely been solved. Yet, quantity is not just about access. There is far more. The bad news, while the enrollment is near 100%, the average attendance in government schools on any given day is just 70%. Of the children who are in class 5, and this is a statistic that has been thrown at us again and again through Asar. Of the children who are in class 5, only 43% can read a text of class 2 level in their own language. Just about 62% of the children, children enrolled will still be in school by the time they complete class 10, which means about 38% of the children drop out before they reach class 10. Only 42% will go on to complete class 12. Only about 8% will go on to receive a college degree. So if you are among those 8%, consider yourself lucky. Of those who do, less than 25% will be considered employable by the Indian industry. So, while the key issues of retention and quality continue to pose a several challenge to policy makers in the country. Some more statistics. The gross enrollment ratio at the primary level is 103%, which means that there are many children who are enrolled in more than one school. The enrollment at the pre-primary level is 78%. There's some good news here because the importance of pre-primary education, early childhood education is now clearly known to all of us. These numbers have been increasing. Of the 15 lakh schools in India, around 1.2 lakhs are single teacher school, like the school that I just told you in Hartoi. There are as many as 120,000 schools which are single teacher schools. 26% of the schools do not have functional electricity. And there's a wide variation here. Only th uh, in Odisha, for example, only 38% of the schools have electricity. When it comes to access to internet, which we are also used to these days, only 19% have internet. And during the COVID-induced lockdown, nearly 43% of India's children did not have access to any kind of online education. So these, my friends, are, is the reality which our education system is fitted with. But the situation is not just completely grim. There are several rays of hope. And this is what I would want to focus a little more on because it is from here that solutions will emerge. I was recently in this school, as recently as just last month. And this is an NGO, uh, it's a school which is supported by an NGO called Mantra in Bangalore. We at Techmahindra Foundation, are fortunate enough to be supporting the school for the last about eight years. In this school, with this organization, we have managed to bring in a number of micro improvements, a number of incremental changes, which has made sure that there is advancement of learning happening at every level. There is a mechanism of peer learning. So children who are in the higher grades have been have been assigned three children in the lower grades and it is their responsibility to help them learn. So there are additional classes happening using the children themselves. There is a child parliament in place and children are actively members of this parliament taking decisions for the school. Teachers regularly meet, teachers from all the nearby schools who are part of this cluster regularly meet and share ideas. There is a tinkering lab in the school a STEM lab which helps children as young as grades 3 and grade 4 do interesting experiments in science. Most recently, a robotics lab is, has also been introduced here. So this is an example of what public-private partnership can do in schools like these. And that is one of the key messages here that while it is primarily the government's job to make sure that there is access to school, when it comes to issues of retention and quality, the private sector has to step up. 
VA Tech Mahindra Foundation, which is the CSR arm of Tech Mahindra, is trying to do its bit by focusing on certain key areas around education, especially teachers' education, teachers' capacity development, and working with youth. I turn to the next example, which is another favorite example of mine. I visited this school back in December 2015. This is a tribal school not very far from Pune. It's a school which has tribal children. Obviously, the resources are very meager. And yet, what I saw in this particular school was mind-blowing. Because despite the meager resources, despite the fact that this school was far away, away from, you know, it was, it was almost in the back of beyond, in a little tribal area, actually not too far away from Pune, because it took us just about 45 minutes by car to beach, but still far enough from civilization. And yet, in this school, the teachers, through the NGO that we are supporting in, in this uh, school, an NGO called Urmi, have managed to use low-cost and no-cost resources to create, create some excellent teaching learning material. What I saw in this school reminded me of what Albert Einstein had once said, which is that I do not teach, I only create an environment for my students to learn. So what I saw in this school was a learning environment, something which could keep children engaged. As you can see, children are seated in circles. These are learning circles where they are all themselves practicing learning and teachers are playing the role of facilitators. What you see here is the use of simple teaching learning material which the children are actively using. The next example is of an NGO school which runs, a, which runs uh, every summer a summer camp along with a large school in Gurgaon. And what they do here is that they get the children from the poor communities into the large environment of this school. And there's a lot of focus on use of technology. Now technology has, as was stated by the earlier speaker as, uh, as well, has a very, very important role to play um, going forward. But it's up to us how judiciously, how well we can use it. While technology has been part of learning for the last at least about 15 years, but it's only now that we are beginning to leverage the true benefits of technology. As you can see in this picture, that there are children who are seeing an audiovisual presentation on the screen up there. In fact, it's a film that is going on. And the power of cinema, the power of film, to really stimulate children's mind is enormous. I think it's time that we really start to harness this to improve the quality of learning. The next example is to do with an inclusive school. Now this relates to a significant challenge that we face, the challenge of inclusion. Because the number of children with disabilities in this country is, is such which is sometimes so much because a lot of these children remain hidden. In fact, some uh, statistics tell us that one out of every eight children are born or acquire some kind of disability. So how do you create a holistic environment of learning for these children? Inclusive education, while a cherished ideal, continues to be a dream. In fact, there, while there are several schools which work for children with disabilities, but even these, there is a lot to be desired, desired. Because we do not have the right kind of educators who can work with these children. We do not have the right kind of infrastructure, the right kind of assistive technology that can really make a difference to these children. However, there are clear steps which are now beginning to happen to uh, improve this. In fact, as recently as the year 2016, the government of India made an important decision. And what they did was that earlier what was known as the Persons with Disabilities Act was changed to Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act. So it was only at that time that it was kind of acknowledged that persons with disability have as much rights as the rest of us. We are now beginning to see some clear changes in this regard. And I'm happy to share that my organization, Tech Mahindra Foundation, has taken this as a very important part of our work. We are currently supporting the education of close to 5,000 children with disabilities across the country. 
I would want to therefore end on a note of hope, as we all understand that the power of education from, for, to transform lives can never be understated. Just yesterday, on the WhatsApp group of Tech Mahindra Foundation, I received a story, a story of Sakshi Amrutkar, who's, who's passed out from the NFBM Jagriti School for Blind Girls in Pune. And she has been admitted to IM Indore for the patch of 2023. This, my friends, is a true example of transformation that education can bring about. A blind girl from a relatively under-resourced area studying in an NGO-run school and making it to one of the most prestigious management institutes in the country. I will stop here. Thank you so much. <laughs>